PCMA TV is supported by Visit Tampa Bay and produced by CNTV. of Connect, where folks are talking about their main takeaways here at the Education Conference. Hi everybody, I'm Carrie Farinak. One of those takeaways involves a learning tool that can really take your education sessions to the next level, but it requires attendee buy-in. We're talking about pre-session reading and whether or not that's right for your next event. The strategic planning session at PCMA's Education Conference came with a little homework. Attached to the description of the session was a link to pre-reading. I think it primes them to expect something interesting in the session. If the instructor is sending pre-reading, obviously they've thought through what they want to do. Speaker Chekaton Deff says even though he didn't ask the attendees if they explored the pre-reading, he felt most of them had. I felt that we had a very good spirited discussion. If I didn't have the pre-reading, I may not have had that many people participating. And so getting them to do the pre-reading, I think, engage a lot more people. The concept of offering pre-reading struck a chord with some attendees. For my meeting, it's the electrophysiologist. Um, it would be very beneficial for the nurses that attend, for the physicians that come along, and the basic scientists that attend. So I think it's a great concept. I really think um, it would be a good, useful resource for those in the medical meetings. While it can be a great jumping off tool, it won't work if attendees don't know about it. I think it might not have been right quite clear in the app that when you're going to the website that that was the pre-reading um, so I just think if you make it easier and make sure people know about it in advance it could be a real enhancement to your meeting. While some business event professionals are going to experiment with pre-reading for sessions others are going to try crowdsourcing the topics. PCMA has been implementing crowdsourcing sessions like this one for three years now. The experiment has advanced from post-it notes on the wall to a more high-tech experience using the app. We kept bringing it back because the this, this size of this event makes it uh, much easier for us to, um, to have such a, such a good crowdsource experience. Participants actually submitted questions that they wanted to know the answers to in the app, and then attendees or potential speakers voted. The questions with the highest number of votes were the ones chosen to be the topics for the crowdsourcing sessions. It's a unique opportunity because there is no PowerPoint. It's really just you working the crowd and trying to pull ideas from them and get them to work with each other and kind of get ideas from each other, which is completely different format than what you typically get with the speaker. This group tackled the question of how to use social media beyond event marketing. Other topics included offering more value to sponsors, combating resistance to change, and redesigning your event for maximum engagement. We caught up with business event professionals to find out if crowdsourcing would work for their next event. And the answer was really that it depends on the type of attendees they have. We're more of the medical research, and so a lot of content development goes into, um, like people just really want to be prepared and they want all the answers ahead of time. And I think they would be very disappointed if they had to vote for something and it didn't come happen. So they want something that's solid and concrete. but. I love the idea of doing this at like with our students at a smaller meeting. We've sort of done something like this, but I like the way this was executed a lot better um, than what we have done. So yeah, I'm gonna take this back, talk to my team about it. While the topics are decided on site, the process actually involves strategy and planning. The first question they should ask is, does it fit within your overall event strategy? I wouldn't advise doing it just to do it, but if it's if you really want to create some type of a uh, personalized program experience, it would be an option to entertain. And then you would, um, I would recommend thinking about, okay, what makes most sense, low tech or high tech? Um, for again for your event experience, uh, maybe for your for the size of your budget, for the size of your participants. Um, so it's asking those types of questions to really understand does it make sense and how can I best execute on it. Definitely some good questions to ask yourself before you begin crowdsourcing. Hi everybody, I'm Carrie Farinak with CNTV. We are proud to be here in New York City working with PCMA to create PCMA TV. We work with them on content marketing and to enhance the on-site experience. We can do the same for your next business event. Give us a call to find out how.